I'm here to tell you a story of how I discovered the immense value and power of small things in life and how I'm planning to change the world one person at a time, one day at a time with it. But first, let us rewind a little bit in this story a couple of years back. I had a great job. I was creative and production vice president of one of the most important production companies in Colombia and Latin America, co-owned at the time by Sony. I had a great salary, I had a great assistant, I had a great driver. In quotes, I had everything. Oh, and I recently had divorced from my wife, which for some people is like something that you really want to be in your early 30s. Single, with a great job, some money in the bank, so time to party, right? Well, that was not the case for me. Something didn't feel right. So, as I'm a photographer and a motorcyclist, uh, I decided to embark on a journey through my country, Colombia, uh, because I feel that the people that live in capital cities, like me, in Bogota, we live in a bubble. We don't really know our country. So, I took a month off my job uh, and traveled through 20 days, taking the roads less traveled and staying with the people at their homes to really know their life. But to make this story a little bit short, because talking about Colombia in 20 days would do for another talk, uh, I discovered something very important, and it was that 99% of Colombians had, in quotes, less than me, but all of them were happier. So clearly, something was very wrong with my life purpose and the values that I was living my life. But I found this fisherman who had 17 kids living with him in a house so small that it's smaller than the room I sleep in today. But I want you to pay attention to the girl in blue. She was a little bit serious at that time. But the point is that I want to show you the power of small things. I just gave this girl a lollipop. And this is what happened. Her face changed all of a sudden. She was full of joy. She was really happy. I've never seen somebody so happy with something so little. Let me show you the previous picture again. You can tell that with only five years of age, she carries a lot of weight because of her poverty. So it was in that precise moment that I realized the immense value and power of small things, and that my life purpose was all wrong, that I wanted to be happy, but happiness didn't come from the amount of money I earned. Happiness came when I helped somebody else. So I decided to start a new company and to resign, basically. As soon as I came back from my travels from Colombia, I had the clear intention of reinventing myself, and I did. After two and a half years being separated, I remarried my ex-wife <laughs> and resigned. And people told me I was crazy for both things, remarrying and resigning. Some people told me, like, you're finally free, why are you going to go back to marriage? Are you crazy? Other people told me, like, you have accomplished so much in your career, why do you want to leave that all behind? And where are you going to earn the amount of money they pay you today? And I said, like, I don't know. I just really feel that I have to resign. And it took me over a year to resign, actually. It was very hard because that place was like my home. It actually was my home for 13 years. And they treated me like family. So it was very hard, but I finally did resign. So I was sitting in my house, looking through my window, with no job, no income, and really not knowing what to do. But it was a rainy day, and I continued noticing that our lives go by without noticing the smallest things in life. So I decided to start experimenting with photography, with water drops, to try to see all the things that we pass in life without noticing. So I started asking myself, what happens to a single drop of water when it hits a still body of water? What happens with a drop of rain when it hits a lake? And what happens to millions of drops of rain when they collide? So I said, OK, I'm going to start experimenting like an inside job on all of these small things that I had to study in life. And I decided to put some color into the water drops to be able to see better what happens when drops collide. And this is what happens. Beautiful things start to happen, amazing figures that the eye cannot see usually. Everything is represented in these water drops. This is actually what happens when two drops of water collide, and you usually don't see that. 
Even famous artists start to appear, like Dali and Miro in some of these uh, water sculptures. And when I start to mix some paint into it, paint, it really starts to get really crazy what happens with water drops. But again, we forget that a single drop of water contains life in it, and that you can actually see the whole world in a single drop of life, and it's a single drop of water, because talking about drops of life, as we're doing here, this is something worth paying attention. Can anyone tell me where do you think this picture is, or better, the surface of this picture? You pass by a lot of them every day. This morning was raining. You probably passed some of them. That's the rooftop of a car after rain. You see, we pass by beautiful things every day that we don't notice because our lives go so fast. But while I, say, while I was experimenting with water drops, I had the time to slow down and reflect upon my life purpose. And I really noticed that what I wanted to do is help others. Therefore, I created a company that will do uh, some products that will, one way or another, help people or change their lives in some way. So the first product that we had is called Colombian 20 Days. It was an e-book telling the stories of my travels through Colombia. I thought maybe I could inspire some people to get out and travel their country first before traveling abroad and inspiring them to be better persons, basically. But not everyone likes motorcycling. I wanted to convey a story to a larger audience. So we invented a new product, an application, that is called Write It Versus, which is basically a collaborative storytelling and creative stimulation application that will help grown-ups and kids empower them through creativity. So I think that everyone is born creative, but the educational system through school and through universities kills this creativity. And to prove this, I went to a couple of schools in Bogota to test my theory. And what I did is that I told the kids, take out a blank piece of paper and write a story. Simple. You don't have to be overly creative, just have 10 minutes, half a page you have to write, and you even have, want to write what you had for breakfast, for breakfast, you can do that. And we didn't want to see who was the best storyteller. We just wanted to document their physicality and, and the way they acted in front of this challenge. And this is what happens. As you can see, this is what happens with kids today in school. This is what happens to your sons today at school. They are bored to death with everything they are doing. It's what they do every day at school, and they don't like it. And you can see in every picture, if it doesn't depend on what school, they're bored. Even this kid didn't write a single letter in 10 minutes. You could tell he was the outcast of the class and was really suffering while I saw him not being able to write anything. But then we gave them our application where we gamified that same experience. And basically what the application does is the application will give you a story title and three words that you have to include in the first page of your story. They're not long pages, only 140 character long pages, a tweet per page, basically. And after that, each kid will send it to one of their friends with three new words that they have to include in the next page of the story. And that's where the collaborative storytelling starts. And this is what happens. Look at the face of this kid and look at the face of the same kid while using the application. All of a sudden, he was happy. He was interacting with his peers. And it happened to all of them. They thought it fostered creativity. And most importantly, they were having a blast while they were learning. So we said, OK, we're in the right track now, right? All of a sudden, it was again like the candy to the little girl. Through small things, we were empowering people, in this case, through creativity. But I said again, OK, storytelling is not for everyone. I wanted something more universal, something that everyone could relate to, something more inspirational or even simpler. But before I tell you about this, I want to do an exercise with you. How many of you this morning woke up and said, today I will and thought of something to be better at, or to do something better, or to inspire someone? Today I will run an extra mile. Today I will love better, more. Anybody? OK, a couple. Great. Not much. How many of you have your life purpose clear? A motto that you live by. 
Okay, about 10. Great. I'm from you. Which one of you could write right now in a single page or even in 100 characters your life purpose? You have it that clear that you could write it right now. Five. Okay, six. Great. That's good. I want to share with you my, one of my personal models that I live by, and is that when you define, when you have clear goals, you define your own success, right? And that's something really, really important in life. I started asking myself, what if everyone had their life purpose clear? What if everyone had a phrase that stated their values and principles? What if everyone could inspire another human being? or simply put a smile in a friend or a family member. I think we would all be better human beings, and probably could start changing the world. So out of a very simple concept, we created something very powerful that is called Moto Dots. It's your life purpose on a dot. It's a social network of crowd wisdom that will empower you to define your life purpose. It will inspire you and inspire others in a unique, simple, and visual way. It's a mixture of design and technology that will inspire other people, and it acts as, as an instrument to empower others. We started already a pilot program in Colombia with people from the base of the pyramid and also with social entrepreneurs. And I want to share from, with you a couple of their models that they have written to empower themselves. For example, Josefina wants to make changes to positively transform the reality of the next generations. Or Carlos, who wants to do something simple as create bridges of communication. Or Camilo, he wants to illuminate the world. He's part of the Literature of Life movement that you probably heard. This policeman, Agent Salgado, he wants to serve his community to give peace and love to his family. The Borja family, they want to serve their community with respect or even never stop dreaming. You see, they're very small things and simple things, but when you put them into use every day, they can be really, really powerful. And for example, this taxi driver, he has a life purpose that probably we can all relate to, and he's giving a better education to our kids. But the power of small things here relies on what happens to the passenger when he sits on this taxi and reads this. He will probably think better of that man driving he will probably have a smile on his face, and we could probably change his day. So, as something so small can have so much inside when you really look into it. Something so simple as a candy can change the day of someone. We want to change the world, one person at a time, one day at a time, with the power of small things. We want to inspire others to inspire others. We want that everyone defines their life purpose and empower themselves to be better each day. We want everyone to dream of a better future and project it in every motto. We want everyone to go to sleep and wake up with a smile. We want everyone to say, today I will, and then think of something that they will change or they want to do better. The world is in need of change. We need positive thought, we need positive empowerment, but we cannot change the world if we don't change our first, ourselves first. And I think that we have the instrument to start doing it in a very simple way. Define your life purpose, define your day's purpose, write it, share it, and inspire others to do the same. It's a drop of life. It's your motto on a dot. Simple, because when you have clear goals, you define your own success. And we think that we can change every person every household, every city, every country, and why not the world with this? This morning, I woke up and said, today I will inspire someone, one person, to define their life motto. And I hope I did. Thank you.